On to bag 7 now, which is the bevel pinion gear assembly, and you can find the instructions for that on page 14 of the manual. In there we've got our bevel gear in shaft, and the bearing block, and the coupler for the torque tube, and the sort of fastenings which we're just degreasing now. First off we have to mount up the bevel gear on the drive shaft. Uh, this goes on the end with the four flats in a square machined on and basically the bevel gear simply fits over that. You just have to make sure that the end of the shaft is lined up exactly level with the bevel gear then pop in the three M3 by four millimeter set screws uh, into there, lock tight it in of course. Then the bevel gear and shaft goes down into the bearing block with the protrusion facing towards the front. This has got two radial bearings in there, 6 by 13 by 5s um, Then the torque tube coupling simply goes over the, over the back, just so that it's snug, runs freely without binding. And then you can put down two M2.5 by 6 millimeter bolts into these pinched bolts here making sure that they line up with the flats in the shaft there. Et voila, fini. Now we just have to mount it up onto the frames. The bearing block fits in between the frames just above the tank and you'll see there's two mounting bolts here which are duplicated for the other side. These are for our M3x32 uh, collared bolts. But the cool feature here is that there's a larger hole in the middle and if you notice on the bearing block there's a, an eccentric machining um, down here in the middle on one side which is absent on the other and that basically is for this little adjustment device here which has got an eccentric it's a, a little round machined um, button with an eccentric shaft machined onto it and that basically is to locate within the block so you can move it backwards and forwards and uh, get to, uh, adjust the actual uh, mesh with the, the drive pulley on the main shaft. First off we mount the adjuster. There's a little um, there's a little slot machined in the back of the adjuster. That's got to face backwards towards the tail and then we can splay the frames apart just enough to be able to slide this down and pop it out through the locating hole. like that. Once that's in position we can put our two 32mm M3 bolts through, um, put a lock nut and washer on each end and then you can see by popping a, an M2.5 Allen key inside you can actually move that up and down which will enable you to adjust the backlash on the, um, on the bevel gear drive. Obviously we'll leave these uh, bolts loose until we've got the bevel gear drive in position. Next off we need bag 81 and 82 with the boom mount alloy box in. No need to degrease these uh, bolts and because they've got nylock washers on them. The boom blocks are slightly different. They're both orientated with their protrusions facing in different ways. Um, they both have the, um, the slot uh, facing the top and the front boom block has got a longer retru uh, protrusion facing towards the front and on one side has got an extra hole drilled in the middle which is a retaining uh, a, a hole that you can put a re M3 retaining bolt in to uh, screw into the carbon boom to stop it flying out during your mad pirouettes. There's also a recess um, slot cut out in the clamp so that when you're pushing the tail boom forward you can actually see the boom coming through and you stop it when it's level with the front of the clamp. Uh, now these go into the frames pretty straightforward. Our uh, M2, uh, M3 by 32 millimeter bolts. Now front one goes down on this side and you'll notice on the right hand side there's an extra bolt uh, hole drilled in the carbon fiber um, to take that boom retaining screw. So you can't really go wrong with those sod them down and bolt them in. So that's our two boom bo blocks in place. Um, cut away in the top of each, protrusions facing out, um, torque tube drive coupling visible down there and as you can see on the right hand frame there's 
a threaded um, recess in that block there where we'll be able to put an M3 um, screw, a bolt down into the carbon fiber to lodge it. Now, he does say in passing, thin film of plastic may be necessary to shim it. That's an old trick sometimes with booms that uh, are a little bit mobile inside. A bit of uh, glass reinforced um, tape is, cellar tape is also quite good for that, but we won't play around with the boom yet. We will await later events to see if we have to shim the boom out. Now we're on to our main bearing block installation, which is page 17, bags 9, 3, 9, 2 and 9, 1. Um, all different blocks, although the middle and the lower block look very similar to me. Um, the upper block has just got a radial bearing in there. Um, can't see what size that is. Obviously it's a 10 millimeter. Anyway, that's just the one. The middle bearing block has got a radial and a thrust bearing mounted underneath um, as per customer uh, upgrade blocks for like the T600 and 700. These thrust bearings are very useful. I was a bit dubious with them at first but they do uh, absorb a lot of shock off these radial bearings and they certainly do allow a very free spool. Um, pretty obvious where they go on the frames. Just pan up to that now. Okay, and we can see top, middle, and lower bearing blocks there. One, two, three. One little point here about the installation, the middle and the lower bearing blocks have got ovals in them, whereas the top have got round. This is um, to allow the um, middle and lower bearing blocks to be maximally stretched apart as far as you can do. So Casima says, put the lower bearing block in first, push down, then do up the lock, uh, the lock nuts for the middle bearing block, put in, put the bolts in, push up, and then while you're pushing up, lock the bolts, and then there's no adjustment uh, possible on the top one. So those just go straight into the bearing block. We just need to consider the orientation of the bearing blocks, and uh, they, uh, they face up different ways, basically. The lower bearing block has got the um, bearings coming in from the top, so the wider outlet of the alloy block is visible. The middle bearing block has got the bearings inserted from the bottom, so there's the smaller diameter of the bearing block facing upwards, and the top bearing block shows the bearing going in from underneath, so um, I think we've got the smaller diameter on the top and the larger diameter underneath. So that's my interpretation of how the, uh, the position of the bearing blocks. The difference in the middle and the lower bearing box apparent when you come to pop the mass down when there must be a smaller ID um, bearing on the bottom so that step in the mass basically gets held and can't go down any further. Um, always a good idea I think to line up bearing blocks before you finally tighten them up so we put the mass down, we're just going to press down on that, do it up and then we're going to lift up the middle bearing block there, do up the nuts, and then we can put in the top bearing block. Unless you're endowed with three hands, probably best to get your trusty local assistant to press down the mast, pushing down on the bottom bearing block while you do it up, and then pop those slender tie fingers up the middle to keep the middle bearing block up while we do up the middle bearing <laughs> block. The middle two fingers pulling up on the bearing blocks handy while you're doing that one up. And that's the finished product, top, middle, third bearing block in position, mass located on the bottom, slips in and out reasonably freely, there's a little bit of grabbing on there despite my lining up before tightening and that's the appearance of the bearing blocks, basically it seems it's the middle bearing block that seems to be installed upside down. Okay, that's it for a week. I'm off to the UK for my mum's 80th birthday, so I'm sorry to drag myself away from the Srimok. Nora's been enjoying the series and can't wait for me to get back. And I'll see you in a week's time. Hope you've enjoyed.